Good evening. We wanted to welcome everybody here. We have about three minutes. We'll let everyone kind of pop on and uh, get connected. You can always rewind and this will be available to view later. Uh, we'll get that out to you through Mr. Gribbins. Um, my name is Amy Miron. I'm a counselor here at Manual High School that works with the admissions department. Uh, we will uh, be able to accept questions and answers through that Google form that uh, was published out at the bottom of the link here. Um, so if you have any questions, we will be able to answer all of those as we kind of process through tonight. And you see a little here, a little duplicate here as I'm trying to make sure that everything is working properly. So we'll get started right at six. All right, everybody, I have that at six o'clock. So we can go ahead and get started. Um, if you didn't hear earlier, if you're just joining us, um, Amy just introduced herself. I'll let her do it again in just a bit. My name is Casey Crowder Abelard. I am the Admissions and Productions Associate at the Youth Performing Arts School, um, just a small part of the admissions team at DuPont Manual. And uh, we're also joined by Amy Muron. Hi, I'm Amy Miron. I'm one of the counselors at Manual who um, also work directly with the admissions department um, and the admissions process for our eighth grade students. Um, I just wanted to remind everybody that there is the question and answer form that is linked um, at the bottom of this in the comment section that you are able to add any questions that you may have and interact with us here tonight um, as we are working through this process. We're gonna go through a quick presentation just with some general information and then we'll have time at the end to answer any questions that you may have. All right, so um, like Ms. Miron said, uh, we're gonna go through a short presentation here just to kind of talk about the admissions process in general because we know um, this can be a hard process, it can be a long process. So we want to make sure that you have all the information that you need about all five of our magnets. And then of course we will cover the early review process. And then at the end, we'll be able to take some questions. So.
we'll get started. So um, first, I'm going to talk a little bit about manual. So right now, we are the number one ranked high school in Kentucky, um, according to the U.S. News and World Report. We are the number 17th magnet school in the nation. We're 58th um, ranked in the nation. Um, we have 30 AP classes. We have the highest average ACT in Kentucky. We have over 190 valedictorians, which basically means that um, all of those students have a 4.0 or higher. Um, we, of course, have the 34 National Merit finalists. We have tons of clubs and organizations, and overall, Manual um, is a great place to be at. Um, manual is a magnet school, like I mentioned, and some people don't realize that you are actually going to be choosing um, one magnet of our five to basically be majoring in, very similar to how you would choose to enter college. So the first one we're going to touch on is high school university. Um, this magnet has the accessibility to all kinds of courses that we have to offer at manual. Um, you will be able to take AP and dual credit, dual enrollment, with our relationship with UofL, um, and you will have a college-like environment. Students are able to design their course schedule so that they can experience a variety of offerings, including six of our career pathways with 20 plus majors. So being a magnet school that HSU majors are able to sort of touch on a little bit of all of the great things that we have to offer. Um, students can balance school and extracurricular activities with all of our 90 plus clubs and organizations. So a unique part of this application for high school university is that we do review grades, attendance, test scores. There are two essay questions, an activities and interest survey, and two recommendations required. For our next magnet, we're going to talk about journalism and communications. Um, this magnet offers a unique experience with emphasis on critical thinking, 21st century journalism and engaging coursework that integrates media and technology. Students are challenged to be innovative, enterprising, well-versed, and creative while taking advantage of communication-related uh, courses. Students are able to apply to nationally recognized and awarded publications. Um, the Journalism and Communications Department, um, they do a lot of our publications, like our school newspaper, The Red Eye. Uh, they do a lot of our yearbook, um, and they also have a publication called One Blue Wall, which is a lot of creative writing and poetry. Um, they, the application requirements are, the, of course, the review of grades, attendance, and test scores. They have two essay questions, an activities and interest survey, two recommendations, and we do ask that you come into our school um, at a scheduled time and you will do a performance writing task. The next, uh, I'm sorry, the next magnet that we're gonna talk about is math science technology. So you've probably heard of MST uh, and that is this magnet. So this magnet characteristics offers rigorous course study for students who have scientific minds through challenging homework, projects, classwork, and extracurricular activities. This emphasis is placed on the application of math and science to technological fields. This program offers ample opportunities for lab work and research. So if you love science fair, you do it every year in MST, so this magnet would be for you. Um, the application requirements of this magnet are the review of grades, attendance and test scores, three essay questions, activity and interest surveys, and two recommendations. These recommendations, we do ask that you have one from a math teacher and one from a science teacher. The next magnet that we're going to talk about is the visual arts program, which I know that NO has the visual and performing arts magnet, um, and we'll kind of get into that a little bit later. But for visual art, which a lot of you are probably interested in, offers artistically gifted students 19 art classes, including AP classes in art history, design, drawing, and 3D portfolio. Students gain access and exposure to local art programs and galleries. Students develop skills, including higher order thinking, creative problem solving, and analytical studies. 
your students, when they choose the visual art program, they really need to love art, that they love uh, practicing their art, they love drawing, they love using all kinds of mediums because they will be asked to do um, all of the arts as opposed to maybe some programs might focus more on sketching or some might only work with paint. Make sure that your artist is, understands that they are going to be asked to study with multiple mediums. So the application requirements for this magnet is the review of grades, attendance, and test scores, one essay question, an activities and interest survey, two recommendations, an art questionnaire, uh, and, a, and a submission of art exercises and three art pieces for review. We do recommend, and we'll probably get into this a little bit later, that all of those art exercises and the three art pieces are put onto a Google slide or a PowerPoint and make sure that you include every piece that we are asking for. The next magnet that I'm going to talk about is the Youth Performing Arts School, so also known as YPASS, which a lot of you are probably familiar with. Um, when you apply to YPASS, you are becoming a DuPont Manual student. So that is confusing for a lot of people because they've heard of YPASS being, a, being separated from manual. But once you are a YPASS student, we are one of the five magnets of DuPont Manual High School. So you are also a manual high school student. Um, this magnet offers highly specialized and intense training in a variety of performing arts majors. And we have nine of those disciplines. So you will study either band, dance, design and production, guitar, musical theater, orchestra, piano, theater, and vocal music. Students are prepared for rigorous college, university, or conservatory programs that are focused on the arts. Why pass? And so if you're at No, you kind of know that uh, the Why Pass building is uh, right on this on one side of No, and the DuPont Manual building is on the other side. So you really do have that college experience of walking around a campus back and forth between classes. So YPASS is a separate building. All of your YPASS classes are actually going to be in two other buildings. Um, we have the main building and Sam Myers Hall. Um, the application requirements for this magnet are the review of grades, attendance, test scores, um, of course, your audition. You're going to be asked to submit a resume, which is not anything that is scored. It just helps us know where your student is at. Um, we're also asking for an essay and two recommendations. We would like for one of the recommendations to be from a teacher at school. So that could be a performing arts teacher at school. For example, if you are in band, you could have um, Miss Pulley do a recommendation and then the other one could be from perhaps your private teacher or maybe a community member. One of them should be a teacher though who knows your student academically and the other one like I said could be a community member, it could be a private teacher, whoever could speak to your student's art form the best. Okay if you would like to to look a little more in depth about the YPASS audition information. All of that is published on our brand new, we just revamped our YPASS website. Um, if you visit ypass.org, you will be able to view all of those audition requirements. And I think that your related arts teachers have a really good grasp on what those audition requirements are, um, but they are there visible all over the website under the admissions tab, as well as the scoring rubrics that your students um, will be adjudicated by. Okay, so here is some general information. All students must complete both the JCPS magnet application and the DuPont manual application to be considered. So your first step, probably really similar to when you applied to know, you have to go on to JCPS and choose a first choice school. Please make sure that you put whatever magnet it is that you are going to choose as your first choice. 
DuPont manual Y pass, we never get to our second choice. So you must choose one magnet and put that as your first choice. Once you submit that, you'll see a screen that says, congratulations, you've submitted your application. Wait, you are not done. You must go to dupontmanual.com and click on admissions to then submit your odd your application materials to DuPont manual. So there's two applications, JCPS, and then you must submit materials to DuPont manual as well. Once the JCPS applications are shared with DuPont manual um, and those are completed, YPASS and manual admissions committees will evaluate the information and materials submitted. So once we have both your JCPS application and a completed application on dupontmanual.com. Um, if you are choosing the Y-Pass magnet, I will then reach out to whatever the email address is that you submitted, um, and I will schedule your audition. And that is just for YPASS. Uh, any changes or updates to the admissions process will be shared via the manual admissions website. Um, and just to be clear, and I think I've talked about this a little bit, when you're choosing a magnet to apply for, it's like choosing a major for four years. You really want to make sure that your student understands that they are signing up for this program, for practicing, for um, going to rehearsal, for making sure that they're doing all of their artwork, for doing the rigorous coursework that DuPont Manual provides, that they're committing to that for four years. And that transfer between magnets is not permitted. Okay, so a few application components that we've already talked a little bit about, we are going to be looking at the grades, attendance, test scores, Behavior data, there will be in some of the magnets and activities an interest survey, um, those two recommendations. And when you collect a recommendation, the proper process is you should have your student ask their teacher, hi, Mrs. So-and-so, I'd really love it if you would be my recommender for my DuPont Manual Y-Pass application. Teacher so-and-so says, yes, I would love to. And you want to make sure to have their correct email address. When you submit your application to dupontmanual.com, uh, we will be asking you for that recommender email. Please make sure that you have that correct email address. Um, we also will be able to have the ability to go back in. You will, once you create your account, you will be able to go back in, look at that recommender email and see if your recommender has completed their recommendations. So they will automatically get an email from us once you have submitted. So there's no need to collect a letter to get them to do any type of paper copy. None of that is necessary. You are only collecting an email address to submit in your application and we will handle the rest, okay? Um, for magnet specific, we sort of went over a lot of that. All of that information for magnet specific preparations for the application is right there on dupontmanual.com under admissions. So here's the admissions timeline. Uh, this Saturday is Showcase of Schools. Um, go check out all of the wonderful schools that JCPS has to offer. You probably won't have to stop by our booth because you're already getting the spiel early. Um, the Y-Pass 8th grade open house is actually going to be on Tuesday. So next Tuesday at 6 o'clock, 6 to 8, um, you will be able to come to Y-Pass to meet our teachers, maybe see a few performances from some of our students and uh, look around our building. Now, I'll warn you, our annex building is under renovation, so it looks a little crazy, <laughs> but um, that's kind of the fun. You get to come into the school and see what we're all about. Um, the manual eighth grade open house is the following week, which is also going to be a lot of fun because that's during our red, white week where all of our halls are decorated um, before our big rivalry game with mail. Um, so those two dates, we really encourage you guys to come out and check out all five of our magnet programs. 
Like I said, the Y Pass eighth grade open house is going to be on October 17th, next Tuesday. And then the manual uh, open house where you can learn more in depth about the HSU, MST, journalism and communications and visual arts programs and teachers is going to be the following week, October 24th. Um, the application opens on November the 6th this year. If you are applying for early review, that application, so all of your materials along with your JCPS application need to be submitted by uh, November the 13th. Then uh, the early review applicant notification, so you will um, find out if you got in during early review by December the 15th, and then the online application period closes for all of JCPS on December the 22nd. Um, now, I'm going to talk a little bit about the audition process for early review. What will happen, because we have such a short turnaround, you will submit that information by November the 13th, and then probably around Thanksgiving, um, you will get an email from me about your audition time, and I would expect to be auditioning about the first week of December. Then that turnaround to finding out whether you were accepted or not is very, uh, very quick. It's right there at December the 15th. So speaking of early review, um, let's just talk a little bit about what that means for you guys. So early review is an option for magnet students. So students who are currently in a magnet to then continue to pursue that magnet. So for no, you guys have the option to apply for early review for either, and you have to pick one, visual art or for the y -Pass magnet. You cannot do early review for any of the other magnets. It is a continuation of what you're already a part of. Um, like I said, all of the students um, were supposed to find out from, I believe everybody on this call is probably eligible for early review, but you will be notified of your early review status. Then the purpose of early review, like I said, is so that you can continue with your magnet. Um, if the current magnet students apply for early review are accepted and they confirm admissions, they cannot apply for another magnet during the regular review period. And early review does not guarantee admissions. In fact, if you feel like you need more time to maybe work on some of those art pieces, or maybe you haven't perfected your audition yet, maybe you might want to consider holding off until general review. It is an opportunity to apply early so that the student can reapply. If they did not get in, they can reapply to another manual magnet or they could choose a different school altogether as their first choice. However, you do have to have all of those materials for your new choice um, in by that December 22nd deadline. So if you are not chosen for early review, you will have to make sure to go ahead and make a decision about your new first choice um, before December the 22nd, okay? So here's a few things to consider. Manual is a great school. We welcome all students to apply because we know that you, you could be successful. But JCPS has many exceptional programs and opportunities for students. So we really encourage you to discuss what you've learned about manual uh, with your parents, with trusted adults, so that everybody can make a good decision. Um, things to consider might be to think about your future goals, what's your participation and extracurricular activities and your mental wellness. And just consider that as you go through the application process, um, because it can be a long process. It can be a stressful process. Um, and, you know, it, it's something to think about and consider with your family. 
So like I said, I mentioned our websites a lot, that dupontmanual.com and the admissions, there's a key that will be your best friend if you are trying to find ways, uh, what you should be preparing, what to expect. All of that is on the website. Um, also, if you need help, there is a special email address that you can contact us. It's uh, and you will you will be able to find it. It's manual admissions at dupontmanual.com. Um, yep, right there. And if you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to this email address. Uh, we do eventually, once the ball gets rolling, we're processing about um 2,500 applications. So Please be patient if you don't hear back right away, but we will get to you. Um, it, it's We really try hard to make sure that all families um, get their, you know, get their shot, get their turn and get the attention that they deserve. So um, we will get back to you. Just hold tight in the process. So that is our little spiel. Um, and I didn't talk too much about what is required from your YPASS audition because I know a lot of you on this call are probably interested in YPASS. But um, the other part that I failed to mention is that you are able to audition for up to three disciplines if you choose. Now, it's a little tricky with early review because preparing for three auditions is a lot. Um, I would really encourage you to think about the discipline that you love, that you really want to give it your best shot and make sure that you are prepared for that audition. Because if you spread yourself too thin, um, that could potentially hurt you. Um, another point of advice is, for example, if you're a musical theater student, and you also are thinking about auditioning for maybe vocal music and um, theater. Well, theater and vocal music, they have material that is provided for you. So please look at those theater audition monologues, learn that one monologue. And if you are auditioning for both musical theater and theater, it is totally okay to use the same monologue for that audition. So that way you only have to learn one. The same goes for if you're doing both musical theater and vocal music. Vocal music requires one, um, they have like an art or a classic song that you're going to choose from. And then you can sing a song of your choice. Well, your song of your choice could also be your musical theater audition song, okay? So that's how some students are able to kind of branch out and have a successful audition. But it's really difficult to say, oh, I'm going to audition for both, let's say, orchestra and maybe um, like dance, right? Those are two very different disciplines. Um, but if you excel in both, I mean, good luck to you. Uh, so I think we're ready for some questions and answers, Amy. Yes. So one of our um, first questions is, um, do students who are in the dance program still have the ability to participate in sports and other clubs and activities at school? Yeah, of course. So our dance program is based heavily in ballet and modern. Um, so the first year, the freshmen are required every Tuesday and Thursday to take a point and partnering class after school. That is a dance requirement. Um, and then after that, the after school commitment is pretty minimal um, until we get to dance concert depending on if you choose to be a part of Dance Ensemble. And Dance Ensemble um, will then be very busy in the month of usually February is when we schedule that dance concert. So you would expect to be after school almost every day in the month of February leading up to that performance. They also have a pretty big performance in May. Um, so we would expect that your dance at YPASS, almost because it's your academic commitment, that YPASS comes first. And then um, a lot of times your student is not the only one who is involved in multiple activities. So it's very common that we work with each other, especially it, 
it's very often that we have dazzlers who are on our dance team that also are dance majors. So that's an athletic team with um, some of our academic dancers as well. So we work it out and make sure that the students can have the experience that they want to in high school. Um, but we are very realistic about our expectations with this is when you should be at rehearsal and this is when you can schedule after school extracurricular activities. Awesome. Um, the next question is, um, if I apply to the VA program, can I take classes like theater and acting? So um, I'll answer that one for you since uh, VA is a manual uh, magnet. Um, yes, every magnet has courses that what we like to call are for non-majors. So um, the VA department has art courses that are um, designed for non-VA students, as well as the theater um, and the uh, dance programs, um, pretty much all of the programs have a non-major route. So you can still participate at some level in each of the different uh, disciplines and um, activities that we have in coursework at Manual. The next question is um, the rubrics. So um, could you talk about what rubric um, and how that you rank students? Sure. So each discipline is very different. All um, So when you go on our website, you will see all of the audition rubrics. Um, there's one rubric that is an academic rubric that is scored for all students. And then depending on what discipline you're auditioning for, um, there will be I mean, there's various subjects on each of the rubrics depending on what discipline and what they're looking for. And so those adjudicators, the, uh, the panels are all made up of our teachers who teach those disciplines, um, will see your students audition. They will have the rubrics there. Um, and we formulate a class, um, like I said, early review. Uh, there's no set number or rhyme or reason um, other than, you know, a student and their very excellent audition um, a lot paired along with an excellent score on their academic rubric um, would make them a great candidate for acceptance during early review. Um, I hope that kind of answers that question about the rubrics, but they are all posted there so you can sort of um, gauge what those teachers and faculty are looking for in our performing arts students. Um, the on-demand writing prompt for J and C, is that scheduled like the Y-Pass auditions? So, um, yes, that is something, as you hear my children running in, um, that is scheduled just like the Y-Pass auditions. It will be something that is uh, provided to you in early January for the opportunity to uh, have that date. Um, and then there will be a makeup date if for some reason that that is unavailable to you. The next question is, um, what is the difference between Y-Pass and VA? Well, uh, <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, the biggest difference is that you're going to be studying something completely different. So um, while all of the magnets are very similar to choosing a major, so like this is the thing that I'm really focusing on and studying. Um, obviously, if you're choosing band, uh, you're going to be taking four years of music curriculum as your um, basically as your elective classes. And then you will be taking your core content classes of English, math, science, social studies, foreign language um, at manual. If you're a visual arts student, a lot of your electives are going to be taking uh, your drawing classes, sculpture, art history, things of that nature. So it really depends on what you are wanting to focus on, whether it is a performing arts, right? You want to be dancing every single day. You want to be playing piano every day. You're studying the guitar every day. Or if you are drawing, you're doing art, you're creating art pieces, you're learning art history. Um, that is the biggest difference is that you're just choosing which art form uh, you are truly passionate and involved in for the next four years. Um, the next question, if my son does well in math, would you recommend MST or is it still okay to look at HSU? 
What would you recommend? If he applies HSU and is accepted, can he still take classes that are included in the MST and bypass magnets? So those MST questions are always the most complicated. So if your student is excellent in math, um, science and technology and wants to pursue the MST magnet, then MST is the route for them. If they have one strong interest but may not be interested in, uh, for instance, if they love math but may not love science and technology, maybe HSU and taking some of our advanced more uh, rigorous coursework with in um, the discipline of um, math would be appropriate. We cannot guarantee that the MST math courses or science courses or technology courses will be available to non-MST students. So as we've kind of discussed, each magnet has their specific coursework that they're required to complete over the course of four years. Those courses are protected for each of those magnets and MST is no different. So those MST math, science and technology courses that are required for the MST graduation is um, are protected for MST students. And um, there are some situations where a student may be eligible to be involved in those magnet um, classes as a non-magnet student. But uh, the, the rule is that the MST students will have those courses. Um, and if there is room, it, there could be potential for others. So I, I don't think that's something to bank on um, if you are looking and really interested in those that MST coursework. Um, the that's difference awesome. between, yeah, go ahead. I was just also going to add that um, don't negate, though, the fact that the advanced math and science courses, even if they're not, quote unquote, MST, they're not chump change, right? Like they're difficult courses. They're still going to be getting the same rigorous content. So you are able to take those upper level classes. We have tons of, you know, like our music students love math and they they take the higher level classes, um, they, they take the AP classes. So it is available for all of our students, but like uh, Ms. Miron said that there are protected classes that keep magnet students almost like in their family, right? But yes. Awesome, so the next question is, um, for recommendations, can you define what a community member and sponsor would be? Um, maybe some examples. So for the HSU magnet that does have um, an option for a community member as one of the recommenders, and then the Y-Pass magnets also have some options for your private teacher or community member that has um, knowledge of your musical ability. So it's important to note that we want you to have the flexibility to have a recommendation from someone that you have spent time with and that knows you well. Those recommenders cannot be family members though. So please, even though your um, sister may be the leader of an organization that you're involved in, that is not a person we need to get a recommendation from. So you would need to choose someone a little bit differently. But some right, some um, examples would be your private instructor if you're a musical student. Um, it could be your coach if you're an athlete and have participated for a while in that club or organization. It could be um, an outside organization altogether, um, an organization you volunteer with or that you spend time with on a regular basis. It is important that you are getting a recommendation from someone that knows you and that you have spent um, a significant amount of time involved in that program or organization with. Um, the next question is, um, how do we know who is eligible for early review? For instance, um, if a student is in the gifted and talented program at no, but also participates in the band, would they be eligible for early review or how would I know that? So the middle school is responsible for providing that list to us and they send it to options and magnets and we get a magical list. So that's it. What are the requirements for band after school? For band after school. That's a good question. So um, you are able to 
participate or not participate as much as your student wants to be involved. So if your student wants to be involved in marching band, for example, you have a lot of after school commitment, especially in the fall. Um, you can also be a part of the pep band when it comes to the spring, which plays at our basketball games. But our marching band is a pretty heavy commitment as far as after school. In fact, they start three weeks before we start school. So they have band camp in the summer um, and they are after school a lot. If you are just in normal like wind ensemble or symphonic band, typically the after school rehearsals are right around concert time. We usually have about five concerts a year for each of the disciplines. Um, so for example, tomorrow, which I think a lot of your students are coming to our PRISM concert during the day, we had a PRISM after school rehearsal today. So that was an after school time commitment, but those are usually um, scheduled very far in advance. I am, kind of, that's part of my job. So I usually solidify that calendar the, the spring before it even happens. So you'll know those dates in advance and it will be a part of the syllabus actually for all of your um for all of your disciplines whether you're in piano uh band guitar orchestra uh those dates and the after school requirements are usually a part of that teacher's syllabus awesome thank you what um would my student be taking next year if they are currently taking algebra one so I'll answer that question um, for a, an HSU student or any student that's coming to manual with a middle school algebra one credit. The course that they would take when they enter as a ninth grader would be geometry. If, for instance, your student is taking a, a geometry class currently as an eighth grader, the course that they would enter would be algebra two. So if they are currently taking a, a course for high school credit in middle school, they will receive that credit on their transcript and then they will progress to the next uh, course. So the math sequence is algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and then um, it gets into some higher math with some different options. The next question is, um, if I am not a musical theater major, am I able to try out for the musical? Yes, you are. Um, we have kiddos from all over. I have an orchestra major in the musical right now, and she's fabulous. Um, so yes, if you are in any of our disciplines, or even if you just go to manual, uh, all manual students are welcome to audition for our musical. Awesome. Um, in an average year, how many freshmen are accepted into the guitar program? Oh, boy. Um, well, it it really just depends. I will sort of like talk about numbers broadly for a second. The White Pass Magnet generally has a freshman class of about 112. Um, we never know. The, the uh, Parents want to know, like, what is the percentage? What is the odds? Um, and the truth is, is, we don't know. I don't know who's going to apply. There was one year that there were not very many kiddos that applied to the band program. So that means that the numbers in the other programs flexed, right? There were maybe some that we had a ton of piano applicants. And so we wanted to give them a little more room. But the answer is on average, I would say we try to accept about five for the guitar and piano programs. Both um, usually have around five majors. Um, will applying a few days after November 6 cause any issues with the application process? So since I kind of um, deal a lot with that initial application process, um, I'll answer that question. The application, when you actually submit your application, doesn't necessarily matter. Um, the big thing is, is that when you submit it, is that after that submission time is when your recommenders will get the link for the recommendation form to be completed. So we do recommend that if you are ready to submit that application to do that as soon as possible. So it gives your recommenders a little bit more time 
uh, prior to the deadline to get their recommendation form completed. It is not mandatory to do it on the 6th um, or shortly after the 6th. So there is a window of time there that you have to submit that application, whether that be for early review or for regular review. But just note that um, it, it does require the recommenders to complete their form and that form does not get emailed to them until you hit submit. Um, the application process is very similar to the way it has been in the past, um, and we are a little bit more prepared this year with our application uh, because we knew that what the process was going to be a little bit earlier than last year. So um, it will not cause a, process, a problem in the process uh, depending on the timing. If you are in choir at no, can you apply for early review VA? Uh, yes, if you, yes, if you are um, eligible for early review, then yes, you can choose uh, either, but you have to choose. That's the important thing. You can't do early review for both vocal music at Y Pass and visual arts. You have to pick. So yes, you can choose uh, visual arts. Um, are applications accepted from outside of JCPS? And the answer to that question is yes. We accept applications for any Jefferson County resident, not just Jefferson County public school students. Um, the next question is, uh, due to the different letters of recommendations and essay needs, needs would you recommend uh, for students to prepare for both of their YPASS application and other magnets? Um, all at once, uh, just in case they don't get in because of the uh, differences of the application. So um, that's a tough question. So it, it kind of depends. If you are doing early review, um, you do have a short window of about a week to prepare the application materials um, of another magnet if you choose to do so. Uh, so that is something that I would consider as going ahead and starting to write those essays or to get those things um, taken care of a little bit earlier if you feel like that you are for sure going to apply for a different magnet if you did not get into the um, Y Pass or VA during the early review process. Um, but obviously taking the time to take care of all of that and taking time away from your VA or Y Pass audition and portfolios could also impact your admissions um, for those magnets as well. So that's a really tough question and it kind of depends on um, how much time you have to put into this application. We don't want you to waste your time and get accepted VA or Y Pass and, and not need that other material for HSU or one of the other magnets or um, MST, but we do um, that's kind of a, a parent uh, and, and student driven question to see if you have the time to get both of those things done. And the good news is that those um, materials, everything that you need is published. I mean, you can see what the essay is, the prompt, right? The, it's right there on the YPASS website. So you could write that essay today. Um, so you can have those materials prepared. And if you and your parents decide that you're going to prepare, you know, what, whatever you're going to prepare it right now, and it'll be ready to go, which I do recommend that you go ahead and type out that essay, have it ready to go before November the 6th. That way you can just copy and paste all of your things where they need to go. Um, that is a good idea to go ahead and prepare it. And then maybe in November, you decide, okay, we're going to just like, just in case work on this other prompt that is here. But I agree with Amy that you really should be concentrating, especially if you have an audition that, you know, you don't just send a packet of papers off and then it's done, that you're concentrating on that audition and then, um, you know, move forward once those results come back. So how many freshmen are accepted in HSU and JNC? So these are always the loaded questions. Um, HSU is roughly, give or take, 150 students. JNC and VA are roughly 50 students each. Um, YPASS has a little over 100, 115-ish students every year divided amongst their nine different disciplines. Um, and then MST has around 135-ish students. Um, these numbers vary and kind of fluctuate from year to year, just depending on our applications um, that come in every year. Uh, what are the after-school commitments of orchestra? Um, 
very similar to what I talked about with the band. Uh, the orchestra doesn't have a ton of after school commitments outside of what is already required in their syllabus. Um, and students often are able to join sports teams or uh, do other extracurricular activities. Um, for a YPASS student, could both recommendations be from a teacher or um, do you really need a community member or, or someone else to fill out that second one? I think both can be from a teacher. Um, and I would especially, we do want somebody who knows your student's um, performance abilities. So you guys are lucky that your school provides those related arts teachers that know your student. So um, for example, if you are in the uh, vocal music program and you get Mr. Russell to, uh, I mean, Mr. Cooper, sorry, Russell Cooper, uh, to uh, do your recommendation, that's great. And then you also get your English teacher because you have a gr great relationship with your English teacher and you do great in English that's fine too. Um, so two teachers is perfectly acceptable. Uh, and it's great because you guys already have that person who might know your artistic ability. Awesome. Um, and then the next question is, um, when, will, uh, when will students that are part of the regular admissions process received notification that they were accepted. And that was kind of at the bottom of that timeline. And that notification will be at the end of February, the beginning of March-ish around that time. And um, let's just say prior to spring break. So, um, and it'll be right around that March 1st, uh, typically a uh, timeline, unless something changes from the district standpoint. Um, but that is the timeline that we are working from at this point. Um, the next question kind of has to do with the application. So it seems like that the turnaround time between when the application opens and when early review is due is so close. So how are recommenders going to be able to take care of all of this in that short amount of time? We will extend uh, when we have a little timeline that's on our website, um, but there is a little asterisk that says recommendations that our recommenders are allowed an additional week to turn in those recommendations. So I believe off the top of my head, it's the 20th. Don't quote me, but um, they do have an additional week. It is there on our website. So uh, you may submit that information uh, by the 13th, right? You get one week and then your recommenders. And we've already talked to all of your related arts teachers and all of the people that will probably be doing these recommendations for you and made it clear that they have that week. Uh, to fill out their recommendation forms. And luckily, it's really a quick survey um, and they are able to speak about your student, but um, we try to make it as easy as possible uh, for your teachers. So one week, I think, is the turnaround after that deadline. So the um, early review deadline for recommendations to be turned in is the 20th. So your part of the application is uh, going to be due on the 13th. And then the recommenders um, have to have their forms in by the 20th. Um, we do need those uh, applications from you a little bit sooner so we can start compiling all of the information uh, because your grades and test scores and all of that come to us from another system through JCPS. And that's why there's the two-part application process. Um, and then that allows uh, your recommenders to get their parts in, and then we will start scheduling your auditions um, as well during that time. So that is why we need that uh, quick uh, turnaround for you. But like Ms. Crowder has said a few times, all of this information is currently available. So you could actually have your entire application ready to submit um, on the 6th. Go ahead and get it done. Put it in a Google document, on a Word document, and to, then just copy and paste the information into um, the online platform to submit the documentation. Um, All right, Ms. Miran, I think we have time for maybe two more questions. Yep, I think so. Yep. And so um, the last question um, is uh, really just kind of about um, the recommendations for HSU can both be from a teacher, yes. So all of the information regarding specific uh, recommendation 
um, timelines will be on, or uh, requirements will be on the website. So uh, HSU could have two teachers. It could have one teacher and a community member. So it kind of gives you a little bit of flexibility. Um, and really, there was one other question on here about coursework. So if you're very interested to see like a course of study for any magnet, you can go on to the DuPont Manual website and you can go to the counselor's corner. On the counselor's corner, you can see um, our scheduling information and our scheduling book is linked on there. And you could see exactly what your four-year map will look like for any discipline, any magnet um, on there, as well as all of the other electives and courses that we have to offer. So if that's something that you're interested in, um, please go look at the scheduling information on the um, DuPont Manual website. So um, just to recap, just a second, um, all of this information is on dupontmanual.com. The admissions key, that is the most important piece for the submission process. Um, all of the application materials, the rubrics, all of that is located on that site. Uh, Mr. Gribbins will provide DuPont Manual with a list of students who are currently taking magnet courses. Um, and uh, they, those will be the ones that will be eligible for early review. So we will get that list and you will receive an email stating that you are an eligible student for early review here within the next week or so. So be on the lookout for that. If you have any questions, you could always ask Mr. Gribbins uh, to see if you're eligible for that early review process. If not, a regular review is another great option uh, for you. So please make sure that if you have any questions, concerns, talk to your teachers um, and or you can email us at the uh, manual admissions at um, web email address. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. I hope to uh, see some of your amazing kiddos at auditions. Uh, I personally will see every single one of their applications. I will read all of their essays and I thoroughly enjoy uh, getting to know all of the fantastic students that apply to our school. Um, and please, we know that this is just a stressful process. It is a hard process, um, but it's also a great time to learn a lot about your kid and to just encourage them to do their best. And we're here to do that as well. So please feel free to reach out with any questions that you might have uh, throughout this process. Um, and we hope that this helped you navigate some of the lingering questions you might have had. So uh, thanks for joining us this evening and uh, maybe we will see you soon. Thank you. Don't forget about our open houses coming up. Um, oh, yes. A couple of weeks, um, October 17th for the uh, Y Pass portion of it. So you can see all nine disciplines. We're, we're splitting it to give you that opportunity to be able to experience more of the Y Pass side and the manual side because um, our short open house window just does not give you enough time to experience our everything we have to offer. And then on the 24th will be our manual open house. Um, so please make sure that you um, come by and see us both nights or one night. Um, we will be there to answer questions for all magnets on either side, um, either night. So we are excited that you joined us. Um, hope you guys have a great evening and can't wait to see your application soon.